Reverend Kuka slams President Buhari's administration, says Nigerian leaders are heartless. And could the violence in the Southeast be a plot to undermine the calls for Igbo presidency? Well, you'll find out because this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. Catholic Bishop of Sakoto Diocese, Bishop Matthew Kuka, is in the news again. This time, he described Nigerian leaders as heartless for allegedly watching terrorists turn the country into a killing field. He also slammed the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari for failing to address the country's security challenges. He said, and I quote, The continuous barbaric slaughter of our people in their innocence suggests that our beautiful presidential villa, National Assembly and government houses are not moving with civilization. End of quote. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Alester Wilcox, a political analyst, and Joseph Hayab, a Secretary General for the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, in Kaduna. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us in this conversation. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. All right. Okay, I'm going to start with you, Alester, before we go to Reverend Hayab. Um, what, does, what do you think Bishop Kuka means when he says that those who govern us are allowing the killings of citizens because they have no blood in their hearts? Now, um, is our ruling class really allowing for these killings to go on unabated and not doing anything about it? Because this is what a lot of people seem to think. Kuka is coming up with this analogy. Uh, it's least expected of the revered Bishop Kuka. Uh, maybe before he becomes a bishop, he understands. But since he becomes a bishop, I guess uh, he has joined the, the class and uh, he no longer uh, becomes the real man he is. Uh, his statements are very, very unfortunate. And um, it shows a man who is political rather than being realistic. And it's quite unfortunate. Everyone respects Reverend Kuka, my, uh, Bishop Kuka. Uh, when he was a Catholic Diocese di uh, di spokesman for Lagos, he was a well-respected man and uh, his words command authority. So for him to have come up with this kind of analogy, and he, 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 he laid it at the doorstep of the president, saying he's, he's not, that is that, as to the extent that the president is careless about the happiness in the land. And uh, anybody in his position cannot make such a statement. Uh, because that's on the mind again, the sacrifices, and I, each time I talk, I talk about the sacrifice and the, and the activity, actions of our security agencies, the military, the police, that are paid supreme, supreme prizes in keeping this country, in protecting this country. There is crime everywhere. When you have to do with a crime, that has to do with ideological crime and violent crime, you, you cannot get it all at once. He never starts under his watch. Under this Buhari's watch, he has been doing all that he can to contain it. If it was easy, if, if it was easy to contain, Afghanistan would not remain a, a, a reference point to the two years after. If it was easy to contain, Iraq will not be a boiling, uh, Syria and all those areas. So it's unfortunate that Bishop Kuka is coming up with this. He has his reasons, but sincerely, he's most unpatriotic and does not recognize sacrifices made by our military those who are paying the supreme sacrifice to keep him and other Nigerians safe. That there are, that there are, no, no, there are, that there are still gaps in successes does not mean that a president is doing nothing. I think that's unfortunate. And nobody expects that from I don't expect from him. His supporters might expect that from him. But I think that's quite uncharitable. Now, you, keep, you kept referring to the bishop as was a revered, was... Uh, is he no longer revered by people? Is that what you're insinuating? That he's no longer as intelligent as he used to think he was? Or his words no longer are powerful? Now, you also said that he sounded more like the president is not careful. Uh, uh, you're saying that the president is careless as to what's happening in the country. Is the president careful as to what's happening? Has he shown any form of human 
humanity towards the lives of the people that have been lost over the months and even last year. Um, is there any humanity coming from the presidency or except when it's very political or touches where the president is most sensitive, then he is careful? Can you e expansiate yeah, on that? Uh, bishop Booker is still a res ever, re I actually respect him as a bishop. All his uh, activities while he was in Lagos, while he was a fairy, a first critic, he has been a critic, no, no doubt, he has been a critic of government. He, he was he tackled Babangeda to the standstill, so he's been a critic of government. And so it, it, it's not a today business. But what I'm saying is, uh, so he's still a revered reverend. I mean, those who, who will share his opinion will hear him. Those who want to hear the negative thing about Nigeria, they will all hear him. But I will give him a thumbs down, a thumbs down on this issue. Now, is the president careless? Of course, this is a president that came up and carried out some far reaching, far reaching actions on the subject in the Northeast. First and foremost, you located the epic center, the command center to Medugri, changed service chiefs, I mean, changed the command and control structure, and successes came. Unfortunately, we have a proliferation, most time politically motivated violence all over the land. It doesn't make him careless. This is a man that holds security council meetings with his service chiefs, almost on weekly basis. How careful has the president so, been with this issue? I asked earlier on. How ca you're, you're, you're telling me that he's not careless, but how careful has he been when the issue because of banditry started as a very little, little pocket of violence? How careful was the president to deal with it before he the, became this big hydra-headed no, monster? No, no, no. No, no, no. Bandit did not start meeting, uh, small. He inherited all this problem. That How bandit careful team. has the president yeah. been uh, with these issues hold of there insecurity? In the northwest, while Boko Haram was in his, on the northeast, there's a bandit tree. It's been on. Now, you are fighting on various fronts. You are stretching your military. You are, you are fighting on various fronts. The army is being equipped daily. We see, we see the army, we see the uh, air force, we see them being given new equipment. On a, you will see them come on a daily basis. Now, that the man does not go to war front like the elite chairman, chairman uh, president does not mean make him does not make him careless. This, this the, 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 the foot soldiers are doing the job. They, are, they may be overwhelmed, yes, but they are doing the job. They put their hands on the line to do the job. Now, there are successes, there are failures. So that does not make him careless. Because he has the military is funded, there is budget allocation, there is actions going on, there is the soldiers are losing their lives. Does that make him careless? I said, we want okay. him to go to war. To okay. go to war front before he becomes, before you know that he's doing something. No, okay. that's why it's no. Okay. He keep doing what he can do from the command center, and then if the sources are come, nobody has followed him. But when he feels lost from, All the right. chat is not good. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move to Reverend, uh, to Reverend Hayab now. Um, Reverend Hayab, this is not the first time that Bishop Kuka is in the news, of course, so, or um, attacking government on either not being um, good as they should be, or uh, in terms of how non-empathic or empathetic that the government has been towards the killings in the different parts of the country. Um, he, he expressly talked about the lack of empathy of the federal government and the lack of value for human lives. Um, he said that, and I said that at the beginning, that um, the National Assembly, the federal government, which is the executive, and everybody else in, in government seems not to have moved with civilization. Um, how has the response of government been in terms of the killings in the country, as opposed to what um, you heard um, Alester say? I am happy to see Alexa, but I'm also shocked that Nigerians have people who would think like him and come public. to speak. It is sad. You don't know where we've been at in Kaduna Seminary um. or the Catholic Seminary and was killed by a bandit. This who his to Bishop Hooker's dad was killed now, killed, and the 70 year old man that they were in the same room was also killed. And Bishop Hooker is expressing concern because it's not just Bishop Hooker, every right thinking Nigeria who knows what is going on in this country knows that people are being killed in their homes, in their churches, in their mosques, on the roads, and our government not showing any serious concern. And he will come out publicly to say Bishop Hooker is attacking government. Please. 
If you are in his shoe, you lost your son, you lost your brother, you lost your relation, what else can you say? And he simply said that they are acting as if they are heartless. So if Mr. President is heartless, please help us confirm since you seem to be speaking for him, then coming to speak to someone or to attack someone who has said something that really concerns you and concerns me. I'm the country chairman of Kaduna State. In the past year, month and years, I have buried several persons. So I've buried several members. I have suffered. We, we never, we people talk about this government, their lack of commitment to security. They, they get some young men like you to come and attack them and speak actually on them without even understanding the consequence of what is happening. We will not pray, but if it happens to one of your own, probably your tone, your language will change. You are speaking here and you said something that they are buying new equipment. Is it not the same government that I am fully aware that recently they invited the late chief of army staff to inquire about the equipment and he said he came and there were no equipments and there were no weapons that were purchased and he cannot account for them. Oh, I think we lost Bishop um, Reverend Hayab again. Uh, his connection keeps coming in and out. Um, but let's go back to Alesta. Alesta, um, he just made a few points there. Hopefully we can get him back to... Um, we'll probably try to get him back on the phone. But Alesta, he's saying that the same army that you are saying has been equipped, monies have been missing. We remember the House Committee had summoned the former uh, Chief of Army staff, or the late one, the one that just, the Chief of uh, Army that died um, in that plane crash, to come and explain where these monies went. So, and I have said this before over and over, that never in the history of the Nigerian army have we seen a group of people do a video to complain about the fact that their equipment are moribund and they need more sophisticated weapons to fight the enemy. And, and this is detail for even our, our police officers where the weapons that they are using to fight are not as good as the ones that the enemies are carrying. So how do we intend to win this war? I am happy that I saw uh, Reverend Hyatt and, um, and I'm happy he, he talks when he talks. He's a country man. And I'm not surprised uh, if he's attacking me. I don't work for government. I'm, I'm in Lagos. I don't work for government. Nobody pays me to speak for anybody. You invite me here. Uh, you know me. Your station knows me. I don't live in Abuja. I don't work for government. I'm not a party member. So I will understand how Reverend Hayat talks because uh, that has always been the language of Khan uh, in attacking people who wants to put it across straight. I'm not oblivious of the fact that we have a lot of challenges. And, uh, are you saying you know, that are you know. saying that Khan is a political party that attacks people? I'm trying to understand what you mean by that's the I, language I will, of Khan. I will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will not. I will not be categorical. I'm a Christian. I will not be categorical on that. And so I will not say what I don't know. But I know the language of Khan. And so uh, Bishop Puka re highly respected, and I keep people still respect him. I never respect him. His words authority can always uh, know better. Yes, he has the right to be outraged when you leave somebody. And um, nobody prays to lose anybody. Nobody prays to lose anybody. There was a time in this country when on Chris, Christmas Day, Christmas Day, people don't go out to go to, to don't go to church. Uh, Muslim days, they are bombing all, all over the place. There's a time in this country where we have that. But uh, that seems to have that face seems to have passed in our national life. And all I'm saying is, if if you keep saying they are not doing anything, then you are not organizing the they are not organizing the fact of how the military has been guarded. And yes, there are gaps here and I said that. I never put give the, the president a pass mark. But if Reverend Kuka and the Bishop uh, Kaya Hayat will stay in their rooms and say the government is happy or is insensitive or is not, is, is careless, I wouldn't make such assertions. There are gaps, there are inefficiencies, there are corruptions, there are, there are, there are high level corruptions within the rank and file. In, in, in the procurement arm. We also see, if you, if you watch Air Force at 56, you understand what I'm saying. The Army commissions trucks and equipment almost on a daily basis. I'm not in the military, but I can only see what I say. And I can only give benefit of doubt. That things are happening. Does not make a, does not say the National Assembly. You see what they do in the National Assembly. Smart at me one day, almost wept at the floor. Because that is a general problem. And when, when can, I understand, um, Reverend Hyatt, I respect him because I've heard of him. He's, is Khan chairman in Kaduna, and uh, I understand, you know the difficulties of Kaduna, the North-South dichotomy and the Muslim present dichotomy in that area. So you understand where he will come from, and I respect him for his opinion. 
but you should not say I'm paid. That is that is anti-Christian. I'm a Christian like you. That is un, that is unchristian like to make accusation that you cannot justify. And I'm sure you hearing me. So I respect you for your opinion. But the fact is, we have a country. We have challenges. We have failures. We have corruptions within the rank and file. Um, when the chief of army staff was asked about arm procurement, he said, I don't know because I'm just coming in. So you can dig deep. When this government came in, they talked about arm procurement, which late Bade was accused, late, uh, late, late uh, Bade was accused of investing billions of dollars. The, the former uh, chief of, uh, the former CIA, uh, what the, 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 the advisor, was accused of five point something billion dollars, and of course, Khan was there. You're going that, back. I mean, to, you're going I'm back to. We're talking about uh, now the uh, monies that are you. given to the so army it, now so to fight the insurgency and the banditry, and, and you're make, going back to 2010 or 2009. Uh, come on, we're talking about now. We're talking about the monies now. I, I'm. I, I'm. It's okay if you want to go back to good luck or yeah, we should, we president should go president go but we're should go talking back. about the army now with all of these things hanging over the heads of you know the army and money's missing how does this really help us in the fight against insecurity that's what we're asking let's, look, let's this, deal this, issue, issue this issue of bulk I, I, packing I bulk passing not, how how does that help us option. how does that help us to deal with the insecurity that we're facing now yeah we have wicked nigerians if 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 if, 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 if uh, Bishop Kuka has told and said Nigerians are wicked. Look, last time in church when we were praying for Nigeria, I called my pastor and said, "Look, let's pray for Nigerians. We have wicked Nigerians all over the place. Wicked citizenry, very wicked citizenry." Does that mean the president, the church is not members of the out. National Assembly, so including you, are wicked people? Nobody who is. But when you put at the doorstep of say the president is unmindful, I don't. I'm not in his mind. I'm not in his cabinet. I can only give benefit of that from where I'm coming from. You can give the military money and they will invest in it. Uh, I mean, we have such issues. 16 billion was spent on power under a passenger. They were totally embezzled. And Khan, Khan was there. So why did they speak out in all these things? So they have their enemy, they have their, they have their agenda. I'm a Christian, I'm a member of Khan, but at the same time, I must be optional, I must, I must be very unbiased. I must be very straightforward. So if he says people like me speak for government, I don't sleep, I don't know anywhere I've asked. I don't even know where Soro is. I'm only speaking based on what I can defend. There are challenges where I mean we are all sitting dogs. We can get caught up in the every every time we all pray for safety. And and that is what and that is what we've been hired to be praying for, and not to wish anybody's family to be involved. You should be praying for safety of everybody, despite the challenges. I pray for his safety, I pray for the, the military, and I must be praying for the military every day for God to give them the strength, the courage, the tactics to be able to defeat this monster. It's a monster that all of us must defeat. It doesn't it doesn't need a blame game. Where leadership is failing, we call leadership to order. You don't do sweeping the organization okay. and say this is happening. And then when somebody okay. comes to the opposite side, you say it was paid. Okay. That is all this. That is of Christian life. And all I don't right. think another that is good of a man in the standing of Reverend Hayat, whom I respect a lot. Okay. All right. I'm going to come back to you, Reverend Hayat. We we lost your connection for a bit, but I think that you're back now. Um Bishop Kuka also referred to the fact that. Our leaders know these people. They know these killers. I'd like to quote him directly. He says, we know who they are. We know who they believe in. We know where their, um, in, their beliefs lie. He also says that, um, but government has never declared these people kidnappers. He's asking why these people have not been um, called terrorists, because we call them unknown government. Sometimes we call them bandits. We call them kidnappers. We call them all kinds of things. Um, there are people who have also been of the opinion that, um, I mean, these are critics who have said in certain quarters that uh, the government was quick to pr uh, prescribe the likes of IPOB. And of course, there's an attack on um, the ESN also as to the fact that they could be people who are killing and burning down INEC offices, even though the governor of Imo State has come out to say those attacks were not done by Ibos and that they have videos to prove it. So the question is, why is it so difficult? Is there an ambiguity of sorts as to um, naming and shaming and dealing with these people who are terrorizing the country? It is sad that in this country we are regionalizing criminals. We want to give criminals regional name or regional identity. 
For King Reverend Hayab, any enemy of Nigeria is enemy of Nigeria. Anybody who causes fellow Nigerians harm is an enemy. Our government should keep him the way the constitution empowers them. I think one of the reasons why many Nigerians are worried is the government seems to be speaking with others with people and then speak to others with anger. So people don't begin to wonder if there are enemies in the south, enemies in the north, speak to them with the same language. Show them that they are enemies of Nigeria. You must not treat some enemies as if they are uh, just the inner room and then the other enemies are children of the outside room. No. An enemy of this country is an enemy of this country. So, the concern of Nigeria and what Mr. Kuka was simply saying is that these bandits are not spirits. Everybody knows them. The fact about this is that recently Gumi went out to many of the countries and had talk with these bandits, so they are not spirits. What are or what is the government doing to go after these people who are causing mayhem, killing innocent people, cutting the life of very committed young men short? That's why he said those in leadership seem to be heartless because they don't think, they don't care, they don't feel the pain the mother of these young people feels, they don't feel the pain the community where these young people feel, they don't feel the pain of the parishioner or people who watch it in the same most of these people who are being killed are feeling. Government should show that he is concerned. Mm. So, um, that is what we're saying. My concern with my colleague on this program is, I'm not sure that I said those things you're saying. I simply wanted you to know that when people are crying because one of them is dead, understand with them, sympathize with them. So when you begin to accuse them, you show, you show not empathy. You don't even care. Okay. You think Puka will just come out and start speaking because his mouth is, he is, 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 has nothing to do. So what we simply want Nigerians to know is, we are crying that something is wrong with our country. Those we have given the responsibility of leading us in Nigeria are not doing what is right. The constitution empowers the government to protect lives and properties. Lives are being killed, properties are being destroyed, government is not doing anything serious. Well, are, let me use the next example. What is happening in my state today is... Well, we're, being we're, we're Reverend Hayab, yesterday the president... You just listen to your first statement. Yep. They kill or they steal people in your community. The next thing is a press statement. What have they really done to stop this evil? What have they really Reverend done Hayab, to stop you hear people me? from terrorizing us? We want to move freely. A community where people are not free will not grow economically because people cannot be okay. useful to them. Reverend Hayab, so can you hear me? Because I want to, to ask you a question. Can you hear me? Reverend Hayab, can you hear me? Let me ask you a question. I, I'm thinking that you're just going on and you can't hear me. Um, People had been asking the president to show concern, to show some humanity, speak to the people, and he did. Well, yesterday, the, sp the speech of Mr. President did not go down well with a lot of people. As we could tell, his tweet was deleted by Twitter because, of course, uh, they had said that uh, it, it, one way or the other, violated the guidelines of you know, the platform. And that in itself also brought another outrage of sorts, certain people, including the federal government, is saying that Twitter is taking sides. But the president had spoken, and he spoke in strong terms about the people who are terrorizing the country. And in, in that same video, he asked what people really wanted him to do, that he's really doing his best. What do they want him to do? And he also spoke about the fact that the people who are attacking um, the country are trying to bring down his government. The president has spoken. What else do we expect from the president? I mean, he has spoken and he said he's doing a lot about it and he's done his best. And he asks, what else do you want me to do? So what else are we expecting from the president, Reverend Hayab? The president is the commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The president commands and it is done. The way the president has been commanding his troops to go to the southeast, he has done that long time ago in Katrina, long time ago in Sokoto, long time ago in Kaduna, long time ago in Northeast, probably wouldn't have been where we are today. Even the speech you are trying to say, thank God that Tuta came out publicly to remove him because those words were hard. You see, the president and his men believe they can use very vulgar language on Nigerians, and they feel Nigerians cannot also speak. Thank God Twitter once again showed them that there is a limit to your excesses. If you want to use the words the president spoke on video, can you really say those words were from here? 
Nigerians are discussing those words are not coherent. Those words like, jam this word, jam this word. How could INEC visit Mr. President? And the president of Mr. President who had nothing to do with INEC. Mr. President diverted to another conversation altogether because that is what his mind has been programmed to say. What we are simply saying is that those around Mr. President should allow him to be the president of Nigeria. Speak to Nigeria, not guided for. Unless Buhari speaks to Nigeria as Buhari, if he's just speaking those words that he's been guided to speak, they will sound sweet to him. So are you insinuating that the president, are you, Nigeria, are you insinuating, Reverend Hayat, that, that the president is not in charge of the, of the affairs of the presidency? Are you insinuating that our president is not hands-on and he's being told what to say, really? The fact of is that every Nigerian knows this, that in the past many months, we've been hearing more about the president from Femi and from Gelba. The fact is that the president just come out probably once after three months or two months to say something very short. Why? Why is that happening? We want our president to speak to us. We voted for him. And okay. he is our president. We, you see, this is one of the areas I've always said that Nigeria is one of the most patient countries. A country where certain things will be done and people will go away with it. In other countries, it's not going to happen. Let's there be this kind of evil and killing going on for one week. And the president have not addressed people, have not really spoken to the journalist's life, not some people speaking for him. Only in Nigeria that things like this are happening. Okay, Alastair, I'm coming back to you. Um, I, we, there was just a post, um, I think today, by um, um, well, one of the ni famous Nigerian preachers, Apostle Suleiman, and he also was speaking about the fact that people have died, students were kidnapped. Um, people were raided, homes were raided. I'd like to read exactly what he said. School children were kidnapped, no federal press conference to address it. People are killed daily, no word of stern threat to the bandits. A tweet was deleted, and you had a press conference, and he says, define joblessness. Alester, help us out here, please. I'm just seeing this tweet for the first time, and um, I cannot uh, respond to Apostle Suleiman. Um, uh, with due respect to him, I, I don't believe in him, so I won't respond to him. And well, it's then, not a matter of believing in anybody. He's a Nigerian citizen. He's seeing yeah, the things he that are happening right. every he, day. He has, right. he has an opinion, and I'm asking you, this is yes. a valid opinion. He's saying that this is what has happened over the weeks. People are dying in their numbers, and the numbers are stacking up. There has yes. not been any press conference. Remember, I said people have I'm asked right. the president to speak. None of that has and happened. But then a tweet the is spoke. deleted, and we have the Minister and of Information addressing the press. So what is this government's priority when it comes to the issue of insecurity? Is it people, or is it the politics, or is it about the president's Twitter handle? Which is more important to this government? You understand something, and that uh, I'm, I am, I, 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 I'm not surprised that... Uh, my brother, Reverend Hayat, my, my Twitter father, Reverend Hayat, will support Twitter. I'm asking you a tweet. question, and I'm, I'm not coming, asking you about I'm asking Reverend my, I'm Hayat. Asking I'm, asking question. I do, I'm just seeing Apostle Suleiman's um, tweets. I'm just seeing it for the first time, so I, I have not digested it. Even the president's uh, tweet, Twitter has, his, has the right to decide what they want. But of course, the president sent a clear signal, and that is where we have selective, selective a, a, a acceptance to what the president does. The president made a clear, a clear case, a clear and, 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 and unequivocal uh, 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 warning to those who were bent on destroying Nigeria. That he's not going to take it with And Twitter deleted, and Nigerians are happy. Yet you want the president to speak. So what else? And like you asked uh, my, my, my speech father, what else do you want the president to say? He didn't say, he didn't answer that question. Rather, he was supporting Twitter in what Twitter did. Well, Twitter is right. That is, that is their business. Although okay. you also know what Twitter did through answers, Twitter was part of the response of answers. So Twitter is a interested party in this matter. So All right. that, that is their that is their business. Okay. Now, if the president said, no, sorry, if the president said, if the president said he's going to deal ruthlessly with those who are terrorizing Nigeria, you know what? He does he insult Nigerians? People are busy, and you are you are saying the same thing. People are busy terrorizing Nigerians, killing Nigerians, and the president give them a stern warning. And people, Nigerians are saying he should have said that. What so? You should have given the speech for him to write now. Okay. We are always good at criticizing. So I know we are this. This is more political. 
and people will defend where the person's interest is like. Now, you ask a question about closing, Gumi Alaska, meeting, the, meeting the, the terrorists. Reverend Kuka and Gumi, they are good friends. My, uh, uh, Bishop Kuka and Gumi, they are very good friends. They were part of the, the, the they are part of the team that led Atiku to go and, uh, to go to a passenger. So they are very close friends. So okay, Alaska, we have knows to go. Gumi is, um, and he can make a very strong case with Gumi on this matter. Okay. So All right. rather than now need to join go. the president, Gumi and and Bishop Kuka, they are in the same camp. Alester Wilcox, thank you very so, much for being part of the conversation. Reverend Hayab, thank you very much for being part of this conversation. Time is not on our side. We thank you all. We have to take a short break. Um, when we come back, we will be looking at the connection between the insecurity challenges in the southeast and the call for Igbo presidency. Stay with us.